Okay, so we are letting everybody in. Hello, hello, hello. Let's just wait while people get connected. Okay, everybody, welcome to our workshop, how to deliver exceptional product onboarding. We're just gonna take a few minutes to let everybody in. Uh, I'm Peter. We also have Sarah here, who's helping Hello. us moderate the session. There's Sarah and Amado, who is our lead designer at User Active. Hello. Um, feel free to join in by putting your camera on. We're going to uh, have a few moments in the session where we talk to people, ask a few questions. Hey, good to see a few faces here. Sergio, Petrit, good to see you guys. Uh, okay, so I think most people have been admitted. I'm sure more are going to join. So I'll get started. I'll get started and um, we'll, add, we, we, we'll uh, admit more people as they come. Sarah, are you able to let people in as well? Do you see them coming up? Um, I see them coming up, but I don't have the ability to admit them. So I okay. think they'll just come on in as they, as they get. Yeah, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let them in as we come. Okay. okay, so exceptional product onboarding is what we're looking at today. Um, so if you are working in a SaaS company or you run a SaaS business, then this session is for you. Um, we're going to look at how you can improve your product onboarding. Um, so let's get started. I just want to welcome everybody. Um, now's a good time to put your camera on if you're happy to do that, if you're in a comfortable place uh, and, you, uh, and you want to be seen. But um, what I'd like you to do is just write in the chat um, your name, where you're from, and uh, if you're working in a SaaS company or have a SaaS business, just let us know what your SaaS is. So if you put that in the comments there. Uh, so I'm, from, I'm Peter, I'm based in Barcelona, uh, and we are an agency user active. So we're software designers. Let's see who else we've got. Okay, Sergio Perez, Foodbot AI from Mexico. Great, welcome, Sergio. Thanks for joining us. Who else? Who else have we got? Adam. I know Adam. Adam, good to see you again. Adam from Video Mass, Warsaw. Excellent. We've got Nick Piano, Edmonton. Is that Edmonton in the UK or somewhere else? Canada. Uh, okay, here we go. Everybody's everybody's joining in. Um, Timmy from Sun Valley, Idaho, SAS for property management. Awesome. Uh, Nick has uh, local SEO software. Joran from Utrecht. Great to see you again, Joran. Um, Redditus. We love Redditus. Um, okay. Alberta, Canada. Cool. Uh, Pau. Hey, Pau. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you're in Madrid from Amazon. Awesome. Good to see that you're over there now. Um, hey, Nick. Thanks for joining us, Nick. Not a SaaS, but a home maintenance business that is subscription-based and has a customer portal. Okay, so you have a product or platform there. That sounds good. Um, Humaira from Sri Lanka. I hope I said your name right, Humaira. Thank you for joining us. Working at Rocket, uh, which is a marketing agency. Okay, Petrit from Kosovo. Personio. Hey, we know Personio. I've been on a stage with them, moderating a group with uh, one of your founders. Uh, at Personio, really amazing software company. Um, good staff, Anna, Poland from uh, Cloud Partner Project Manager. And Harish, thanks for joining us again. Harish from Call IQ. Great. Okay. Good to see you all. It's a nice and busy session. Appreciate you all joining us. So feel free to ask questions, put them in the chat. Ask us anything as we go along. We'll pick them up. We'll pick up the questions uh, and, and keep engaged. Um, so I'm going to get, get cracking with this session now. The first thing uh, that I'm going to mention is that 
We offer a product audit for software companies. So as I mentioned before, we're user active, we're a software design agency, and we design uh, user interfaces that uh, users love. We also focus quite a lot on onboarding, designing great onboarding flows. So if you need any help, just feel free to book a call with us, useractive.io forward slash 15 minute hyphen strategy. That's the link you can go to to book a call um, and we'll talk about your product, any challenges you've got uh, and anything you're, you're working on, you want a bit of advice or a bit of support with, um, feel free to book a call there. I'll share this link again at the end, but I just wanted to let you know in case you, you have to jump off the session at some point. So what are we looking at today? So we're going to focus on typical onboarding challenges. Then we're gonna look at how to create your optimal onboarding flow. Then we're gonna have a Q&A. There are a few things that we're going to uh, provide you with as uh, bonuses. So we've got a set of worksheets. We're gonna email those out after this call. We're going to share a session recording for anything that you might have missed or want to revisit. And then you can also book a call with us, uh, which I just mentioned, but you'll get the opportunity to do that again at the end. Okay, so before we get started, let us know in the chat any onboarding issues or problems that you're currently having with your SaaS. Are there any challenges you're having with onboarding, whether it's uh, that you're not sure how to give uh, best experience, whether you have some friction in your product and you're not sure how to uh, help users get beyond that friction. Uh, maybe you have a lot of drop-off, people aren't converting, uh, they're signing up for a free trial and then they're uh, not staying or you're not retaining them. Adam, okay, so Adam, um, a video immerse. Okay, so Adam says how to activate the user. Okay, this is a great question. We're actually gonna address this. So this is really nice. Um, user activation is, uh, is really important. So you wanna, you wanna present the features um, and the benefits of your product and actually get your users to start using start using it so activation is that practice of getting users to actually start becoming aware of your features and to start using them um your own what is the best way to avoid technical friction installing a script for example okay this is a, a typical one for platforms where you have to do a complex integration uh your own, i like this uh, question We've actually done uh, a couple of these designs before. There's a few things that we've done, such as inviting a developer to um, join your user, to help them with this uh, moment of friction, uh, providing really clear step-by-step -step guidelines, just designing a flow um, with uh, a lot of guidance, maybe some knowledge-based support, but we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that as well. So activating users, avoiding friction. These are real key issues. Um, Harish has asked how to show user journey in the design flow. That's a good question too. I think one of the things, one of the tools we use for that is uh, progress indicators. So we want to give an idea of the steps in your onboarding flow. And a progress indicator can show all the steps and how far your user is getting through that process. Also, what they might find useful is a checklist. So that checklist just lets them become aware of um, all of the steps that they need to take, whether they skip some or not, at least they become aware um, of the steps they need to take. Okay, so those are a few common issues. Looks like uh, there are quite a few issues in, in onboarding. So hopefully we're gonna tackle them all during this session. So let's look at what makes onboarding really difficult. So one of the first things is engagement and retention. So 30% of users log in once and they never come back. So they actually set up their account. They might have the intention of using it during a free trial, or, but for some reason or other, they just don't ever log in again. So one of the first things you want to do is set a really good first impression and try and engage them try and engage your users with some activities, stimulate them so that they have a reason to come back and they, they have a desire to come back. If you have any issues with this, with drop off, um, just put a, put a Y in the chat for yes. Uh, just 
just if you have any issues with users um, churning or bouncing during the free trial process. Um, another problem can be that bad, poor onboarding causes churn. Okay, so if your user doesn't develop a good habits in the beginning because there's been some lack of guidance or some confusion, then later on during their life cycle, they can churn just because they didn't develop good habits. They weren't necessarily impressed with the product and they didn't have the tools and um, understanding to maintain uh, their lifetime using the product and actually build habits. So poor onboarding is actually the third most important reason why customers churn. So the first two are product uh, lack of product fit, and the second is lack of engagement. But the third biggest cause for churn is, is poor onboarding. So Farhan said yes to having uh, difficulty with uh, engagement uh, and retention during the free trial flow. And Timmy Ryerson, what's been your experience with having preloaded trial data for users to go through? I like that question. Um, there's been a mi mixed, um, mixed experiences with it. Um, we've provided before the option to use a demo account that's filled with some dummy data. Um, sometimes it's a great, uh, a great thing to do. Other times it can create quite a messy account. So we don't advise in giving a lot of data or a lot of uh, dummy content in, in that free trial but you might just want to give a couple of records. Um, so you have a CRM, one or two contact records, just so that they have a, an idea of how to um, populate that. Uh, but we've had varying, um, varying experiences with it. And it depends on the complexity of your product and, and whether, you, whether you really need to assist your users by enabling them to see um, a busy screen. Another thing that you can do if you if you want them to um, populate uh, empty screens is just give them a really nice flow and an incentive to start populating those screens and activating them. Demo data can be one way of doing that, but you can also use graphics to help them to visualize as well. Okay, so poor onboarding poor causes. Onboarding in progress. Um, um, let, uh, could you repeat that? Was that Timmy? What's that? No. Oh, sorry. I thought you were asking a question. I just heard 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 you on the on the speaker. Okay. So um, the third challenge is that competitors are also working on their onboarding, particularly enterprise. So if you compete with enterprise SaaS, um, then eighty two percent of enterprise organizations rate their onboarding approach as a key driver of value. So they're investing in onboarding. Um, and, I, and I think it's around 70% of them actually have an onboarding team, onboarding uh, staff that help, that help with this process. So it's pretty important to develop engaging, strong onboarding in order to make sure that you give your product the best chance um, of, of competing and coming out on top uh, against your competitors. So before we jump into some worksheets, we're going to have a look at some worksheets coming up now. Um, but I want to give you an analogy. And that is of when you check into a five-star hotel. So if you've ever checked into a really great hotel, uh, you'll notice there's a, there's a bunch of things that they do to make you feel really welcome, excited about your stay, and um, just relieve a lot of the issues, a lot of the, the friction you might have. So... Let's think about what they do. When you arrive, you're welcomed. Usually somebody comes, takes your luggage. Um, they talk to you about the facilities. Sometimes they even show you around. They let you know about events that are on. Um, they take your bags up to your room or keep some bags in reception if you need it. And they offer you services. They usually check you in for dinner or lunch tell you about other services they have sports activities or spa or uh, healthcare things like that and the experience can make a real impression uh, this is one of the reasons why people uh, like to stay in a luxury hotel if that if they're booking a really special holiday or a special trip and your product 
is very similar to that. So you're welcoming somebody into your product. Uh, they need to be orientated. They need to be shown around, um, shown what the, the best features are, shown where they can get help if they need it. Things like um, uh, videos for support documentation, um, things like knowledge-based materials, uh, tutorials. Uh, but they also need to have some of their reservations met. They might have some issues that they're thinking about. Oh, how will this integrate with another product of mine? Or how are we going to onboard our, our team on this? How are we going to train them onto this? So one of your jobs, just like the hotel, is to let them know about your features and value. And then also just alleviate the questions and reservations they have. So that's a pretty good analogy that you can that you can think about when you're when you're developing on <laughs> So that said, let's get started uh, in looking at, we've got a few worksheets here. So I wanna jump right into these. Let's get started at uh, what we're gonna look at today. So step one, you want to welcome your new user into your product. Step two, you wanna help them to visualize success with your software. After that, we want to showcase the value that's hidden within your product. In, in many onboarding flows, it's common that not all of the product value is surfaced and presented to users. So they often get into the product without knowing all of the benefits and the features. Uh, step four is that we want to start developing habits within our users, get them performing tasks, get them activating uh, features and actually integrating your product into their workflow. And then the fifth step that we're gonna look at is how to reduce onboarding friction. Okay, so let's get started. Um, we, we're gonna have five worksheets for this. So I'm gonna encourage you to think about this for your own products. And at each step, I would like you to um, feel free to ask questions or give us an example of how, of, of if you're thinking about your product, how this will get to your product. <laughs> Sorry, Guy, I've just uh, muted you there. Um, okay, so welcoming your new user. A great way to do this is, is often showing a video or a screen that, um, uh, let me just see if there's any, okay. Yeah, a, a screen or a, a video that just welcomes your user, thanks them for signing up, um, gives them some sense of validation that they've made the right choice in selecting your product. So that's the second step here in, in this worksheet, confirmation. And the third one is you want to set expectations. Okay, what can they expect from your product? What's coming up for them um, during their free trial or their onboarding? Uh, is there any added benefits that members of your team, customer support, webinars, anything like that, that they can benefit to, to really help their onboarding uh, go smoothly? A good practice for this is also to think about how you want your users to feel. How do you want them to feel during the onboarding? That relates a lot to your product. So, so one of the one one of the sayings that I was told once by by a, a SaaS coach was that good software has personality, and. This is a great moment to introduce some personality and, and, and set the tone for the for the product for the experience using your product, right? So, um, whether you do a personalized video of uh, a member of your team, someone in customer success coming on and doing a video, or whether it's uh, some graphics, animated gifs, and, and messaging or copy, it's great to be able to uh, welcome them you know, confirm that this product is the right choice for them, set expectations, but do that with a sense of personality that relates to your industry and, and your product. Does anybody here have already a, a good um, welcome video or screen uh, that they found really engaging for their product? Let, let us know in, in the comments and, and maybe I'll ask you to, to share that with us in briefly on, on um, the microphone. I'm using, using an example here. So I'm just gonna show you how uh, you might approach this uh, worksheet. Um, 
in this example, I'm using a software, uh, you know, a theoretical software. This isn't a real software, but it's called Active LMS, Learning Management System. So if you're familiar with learning management, this is a type of software that helps um, deliver educational content. Uh, to this can be used within organizations, within education, uh, or within corporate uh, businesses. So for, for the first step, for appreciation, you might just say, thank you for signing up. We think you're going to love Active LMS. During the confirmation, you want to give some kind of reason why Active LMS is the right choice for this user. So you're trying to reinforce their decision to give your product a free trial. For example, you'll be able to increase employee engagement by 155% and cut onboarding time in half. That's a really powerful message. It gives us stats and it gives the, the user some kind of expectation or anticipation of improvement that they'll benefit from for the software relating to pain points that they have. Expectation. We'll help you set up your first training module in 30 minutes. That enables the user to just uh, have a vision of uh, getting through onboarding and getting to be productive straight away. We're kind of already establishing for them the habits or getting started uh, making use of, of this software. Now, for somebody that's managing a large uh, enterprise uh, team and they have lots of training, lots of processes, lots of modules for learning for their employees, then we probably want them to feel relieved, empowered, and eager to get started. So you can see how I bring a sense of um, emotional feelings into this part of the software process can relate directly to your product and your industry and what your ICP really wants to feel, really wants to, um, uh, you know, how you want them to feel during this process. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, we've welcomed the user into the software with a video or a graphic and some, some nice welcome message. The next thing we want to do is get them to visualize success with your product. So if you think of the user before they find your software, um, they are struggling with a particular problem that they're looking to solve. Now, you want to think of this as a journey. Um, the user or your, your ideal prospect, it has a problem and they want to get to a destination where this problem has been solved for them. They have a much better situation, a better outcome, um, and we're calling that their ideal scenario. So one way that I've been... Uh, um, Another, another coach in the, in the service industry taught me these, this concept of the island of SAD and, and you, you want to move your users. They have frustrations around their current problems. So you want to move them from the island of SAD to the island of happy. And if anybody has a good example of how their users may come to their product with some kind of problem or frustration, um, we can use you as an example if you'd, if you'd like to share. Just give us a shout out or mention it in the comments. If you have a really good idea of your ICP's frustrations, uh, we'll, we'll just explore that and, and how you can get them into a place where they're, they're in their ideal scenario. So this worksheet is just all about um, defining the problem, then looking at the actual steps that your product takes to get them from... A to B, and then the ideal scenario. So let's just use this example for, for active LMS. So let's consider that, the, that their key uh, ICP has the frustration of training new pro employees on repetitive tasks, which is time consuming, and it's also disengaging for the employees. So their pain points might be that there's no visit Ability around um, employee engagement, there are inefficiencies in HR, high employee turnover, and a lack of systems. Active LMS might have a few steps within the product that helps get the user from this island of sad over to the island of happy. Um, 
so the ways they may they might do that is by by enabling their users to set training games checklists questionnaires quizzes uh tests and more so educational content and also content that tests uh teams and employees around certain tasks um and a workflow might look like some of the steps might look like okay the user creates a quiz they preview this quiz they create or import contacts into their uh, lms and they send this quiz out to the contact list and then they track results and stats so we i've worked with a, with a company very similar to this they had a process very similar to this and then what happened is that for their clients they were actually able to track engagement and then they could improve consistently upon how they delivered their training modules to staff and they were dealing with um teams of 100 to 500 employees so as they were able to improve efficiencies and engagement this this made a big impact on on such a large team so this helps us to then describe the ideal scenario so if you fast forward to three to six months of this um, this enterprise client using active LMS, uh, training new employees is now faster. Employees are more engaged and aware of task requirements. Training efficiency has increased by 68% and work for, workflow mistakes have reduced by half. So this is the kind of ideal scenario that you want to communicate during onboarding. And just going through this process of completing this exercise enables you to get to a point where you can really articulate your user's ideal scenario. And once you have that, that's something you, that you can use in your messaging in the onboarding to frame your product as, as a, it, by giving your user the state that they'll be in in the future, it usually pushes them through the friction moments of onboarding and um, encourages them to commit to, to making habits with your product. So visualizing success, framing success in the mind of your new users is a really important step here. Um, Harish has a question. Uh, is, should this be an ideal scenario or case study? Uh, that's a great question. I think you can, you. I think you can use an ideal scenario, but you can make it real, right? So you obviously want, if you're using statistics, you want to use st statistics based on your, your customers, on your users. Maybe you have some average improvement rates across a cohort of users on your software. Um, a case study is also a really powerful thing to use. If it's very... Um, I would only use it if you can use something very succinct from, from it. Um, so usually you want to use case studies in your sales process, uh, which is, is obviously validates your product and the results it can achieve. But maybe you, you'd like to reference some statistics or a measurement of improvement or success here. Rather than using the whole case study, just uh, you can reference it. Um, with stats, I, I'd focus it on that because what you want to do here is make the user think about their ideal state rather than somebody else's case study. And if you can get them to visualize success for them, then what happens is that they have been incentivized, then they have the uh, initiative to, to make the efforts throughout onboarding. That's a really great question. Um, Okay, so that takes us on to step three, to showcase product value. So we've welcomed the user in, we've asked them to visualize success for what success looks like for them using the software. And now what we wanna do is just check off your features and benefits against the pain points that your users have. So. This is how we show the value that's in your product. Um, and if we present that value as a benefit to the user, and then we reference the feature, it positions that feature as the, their tool or the thing that they, want, they would need to use to get that benefit. Sometimes if you just present features, it doesn't really click in the right way uh, to incentivize users to start activating those features. So 
in this exercise, we just think about different pain points that your users have related to uh, the problems that, that made them try out your product. For each pain point, try and map it against a feature that you have within your software. And then for each of those features, articulate what is the benefit of that feature. And so when you present these features to your user, you're gonna present the benefit of the feature and explain how the feature works. You don't need to mention the pain point. They already know their pain point. Uh, so when they read the benefit, it will resonate. But we list the pain point here so that we can um, map the pain against features and benefits. So just for, uh, as an example for um, Active LMS, one of the pain points might be getting employees to follow systems for repetitive tasks. Now, without having systems and processes, it might be difficult to do this. Maybe there are many different managers and maybe each manager has the responsibility of um, training employees on these repetitive tasks and they, and they might each do it differently. Uh, so it becomes very difficult to control and it becomes very diff difficult to measure. So one of the features that, uh, that Active LMS has is task checklists. So the benefit of this feature is that employees can now see the steps and check them off each time they perform a repetitive task. So now there's a system and everyone will follow the same system. It becomes easier to manage, becomes easy to measure and improve. So that's just an example of how you go through this um, exercise. And then the way you might present it in the product might be, have you ever seen uh, a kind of slider when you when you take a, a free trial and it, and it just um, goes through three to five points or features in a product. Um, this is a good way to use that. I sometimes call that an orientation flow, um, but there are different names for it. But you can, you can hit each of these pain points on, on a slide for each. So for something like this one, you might, you might say um, increase employee productivity um, by with checklists and then we show the checklists feature it could be a, an animated gif could be just a static ui and you might have an interaction to get started and interact with that with that um with that feature so cars okay so that's showcasing product value so here, remember, it's your key features, your best features. You're going you're gonna to check them off one by one by, by enabling your user to see them and acknowledge them during onboarding. Any, if anyone has any questions on, on this thing, just feel free to chime into the chat. Okay, so now that we have told them about the wonderful features, we're going to see if we can get the users to actually engage with these features. So if you're familiar with the jobs to be done framework, it basically takes, um, I'll explain it to you like, like this. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it as, as uh, SaaS founders, but if you have a desired outcomes for your users, your ICP, there are desired outcomes that they have in using your software. Now, if you break that down, there are specific tasks that need to be followed in order for your user to experience their desired outcome. And what we want to do is list those tasks as jobs to be done. And that gives us an idea of the actual jobs that your users have to do to achieve this desired outcome. And once we list them, we can actually put the steps for completing those tasks. Now, the reason for doing this is that in your onboarding flow, you might design a, um, a user journey that asks users to interact with features that directly relate to these jobs to be done. So they start actually using them. Now, they've seen the benefit, they understand the features, and now we're just using calls to action to get them to engage. Typically, this takes the form of something like a checklist within the, an onboarding flow. So you would have seen that in, in a lot of SaaS products. There are many other ways to do this. Empty screens. Sometimes we design features to get the user started 
on a on a on a tasks on a task and within that empty screen we might just position it hey here's how you can improve employee engagement um, create a survey or create a questionnaire and um, send it out to your network and then we'll take them through that journey so in this uh, in this worksheet um, one of the jobs to be done for active LMS might be to publish a course to train new team members on how to deliver customer support now the steps for that might be okay they create an outline for this course they write their modules they review and share the modules they publish this course and then they distribute it amongst their team so here we've got a, a user journey a workflow that we design to take the user through this process to activate this feature um, so we're going to present them with oh here's the here's the Here's the course creation uh, feature and get them started on that flow and help them to actually create their course. We'll guide them through that process uh, and enable them to publish it, show them how and um, okay. ask them to share and distribute and show them how to do that too. Let me just see if somebody has, maybe somebody needs to put mute on. I can't see. Oh, it sounds fine. Okay, so if there's any questions on that or you have anything within your product where you are unsure how to use these steps, let me know. Has anyone got any, any features that they're struggling to activate or are unsure how to present features against the benefit uh, let me know and we'll we'll uh we'll spend a moment looking at that for you jobs and steps what is the difference okay harish kumar thank you for the question he's asked me jobs between jobs and steps what are the difference so a job to be done um you, it's something that your user will have to um create something that your user has to do within your product but then in order to actually achieve that job there might be actual steps that the user needs to take within your software so for in this example creating a, a course this might be imagine they're creating a course that has five modules and it's just written content and they have to write out these uh five pieces of content well, the steps for them to do that is to create, you know, they might first of all create the outline of these modules or create the chapters or headings. Step two is write the modules. Step three, they're just going to review, um, edit, um, and make sure that they're, they're happy with this course. Then they publish, and then they're going to share that maybe with a group of employees or a team within the business. So the job to be done is a, is a larger, um, is a group of tasks, essentially. That's a job that they want to achieve. And then the steps, you can think of them as the actual user journey within your product. Um, each step that contributes uh, along the journey to achieving that job, that job or task. Um, okay, thanks, Sergio. I think the explanation is clear. Great. Happy to hear it. Um, Nick, Nick says, our product isn't live yet in design, but one big challenge I'm looking to address is transitioning customers to using the platform versus doing what they do now get help via customer service sms email into zendesk or call okay so this is this is a challenging situation because you have customers who've already developed habits they've built habits and your challenge is transitioning them from these existing habits into new habits which is is actually quite difficult to do because as you know, habits, um, they're quite sticky. So I think a, a huge part of this for your product will be to provide self-service uh, content and self-service intuitive um, interface user journeys. Um, sometimes you can make that engaging and fun and it encourages them to do it and incentivizes them to do it. Um, I'd release communications about these new features or new, new systems within the product. Um, you might also start transitioning them 
to to a new model so if you've improved the self-service approach uh, you're communicating it you've released it into the into the product then you might make them aware that there'll be a reduction in some of the channels for customer support relating to these things and then you might restrict some of the customer support channels uh, in order to encourage those habits um, I think it has to be done tactfully and um, in a gradual step-by-step -step process. That's how I'd consider approaching that. Let me know if that helps, Nick, if that makes sense. Um, you've given me an example here as well. At managing their own billing info, updating their own property information, submitting a service request via the portal, first just sending into ops. <laughs> Yeah, so the, these are actually really nice opportunities to do uh, product top updates uh, and feature releases, um, send out emails. Hey, we've got this great new feature for managing billing. Um, log in and, and check this out. When they log into the product, there's an announcement in the product and a call to action to get started on that journey. Um, and then I think I think this message needs to be reiterated it reiterated for it to hit home um, uh, and you just communicate and encourage them as much as you as you can and maybe incentivize them if you can think of ways to do that um, and then restrict the support to those particular features through the channels that they're currently using eventually but I'd always communicate it each step of the way I hope, I hope that helps Nick um, Adam has asked whether for, for different ICPs, there are different problems, how to show this to the user. This is great. This is a really great point. So one of the things that we have to do for different ICPs is to give them actually a personalized experience, right? Um, it does mean more work, but it, it, it just increases engagement and it makes each ICP identify that this product has been considered and thought about for them, right? So um, one way that you can do this is uh, quickly taking, um, having a micro survey at the beginning of onboarding, asking them what their, their role is or their, their profile type or their intention with the product. And once you have that, you can present them with the appropriate onboarding flow for their ICP. Um, it does mean, creating a few different versions of your onboarding hopefully there there's just simple adjustments and sometimes it even means customizing their dashboard when they you know when they finish onboarding and they land in the product maybe they see a different type of dashboard too so that's another thing we've done it's it's really really customizing and personalizing the experience for every different um, user profile Okay, so hopefully I hope that helps for you, Adam. Um, Pierre, how design is facilitating this process? How do you work with clients for this purpose? So uh, that's a great question, Pierre. Um, these, these worksheets help us to strategize and think about the way to present features and the way to present onboarding. With onboarding, there are lots of different um, interfaces or interactions that, that we can present. So uh, we might give them some slides of um, that orientate them in the product, um, a welcome screen or video, uh, checklists, um, tools through the product, you know, walkthrough, um, overlays that just uh, highlight key features. Um, a very popular one is the checklist, product checklist that go, takes them through a number of tasks that, to get them activated to actually adopt the product. Um, I, think, I think one thing I could do here is, is show some examples of UI that relates to each of these different steps and that, that might help visualize it from a design perspective. But if, you've, if you're familiar with those types of interactions that I mentioned from either looking at other SaaS products or taking onboarding, um, onboarding on products yourself, taking free trials, then, then hopefully you, you'll be able to kind of visualize. Um, so I hope that, that answers the, the process. Yeah, how do we work with clients for this purpose? So these worksheets are the foundation of how we think about a product when we're designing. So we really get to know the users. 
the user profiles and we get to know the product intimately. So when we're thinking about um, how to present in the onboarding, um, these worksheets are, are, are kind of how, how we're thinking strategically and they help us to create our designs. So this is almost the, the background thinking and then our designs are based on top of this. But one of the really good things that we, that we do is, is in the next slide coming up, it's to map out the journey. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll just move on to that now. I just want to uh, answer one or two more questions. Um, Adam asks, thanks, th should this be in a welcome meal or onboarding widget after login? So I would, I would present, um, I, would, I would actually, th this particular step is about activation. So we want users, whilst they're in the product, to start actually doing these tasks, performing these tasks. So I would, I would use this as a widget within your onboarding, or even if it's not a widget, something that's in integrated within, this, within the key screens that actually gets them started. Uh, whether that's um, calls to action within an empty screen, whether that's something in the navigation or it's a checklist. But of course, each step along the way, you can use welcome emails or emails during 14 day trial period to bring users back in and re-engage uh, with one of these features. So that's a, that's a really great question. Um, S. Sarkar, your name's coming up as S. Sarkar, so I assume that's your, your surname, Sarkar. Um, are you using a tool to do this? So we, we design everything custom using Figma, but there are many good tools to do this. You have things like app queues, um, you have, uh, there's, there was a, a good one that I've been seeing a lot lately that I'm just forgetting the name of. I think it's called user, user guiding. User guiding is one. So these have some, some methods for you to embed onboarding widgets. But we, we custom design these with Figma. Um, Harish, it would be awesome to show with an example. Yeah, thanks for that. Hey, I'm going to add that to this. Uh, I'm, I might do this presentation on an ongoing basis. So I'll be sure to update these with some examples because I know you'll appreciate that. Thanks for the, for the feedback. Okay, so we are now encouraging the users to develop habits, to activate features, to engage with the, with the, you know, the value in, in your product. Now, step five. We, you know, we've done all this thinking and we've thought about how to present the product in the best way and in the best light to your user to address their problems and to get them their desired outcomes. Now, one of the things that you want to do to ensure that they get through this onboarding is obviously to reduce any friction, reduce any challenges that they might have. Whether this is to reduce the number of steps they have to take, whether they have to um, do some tricky integrations, we're going to look at how do we simplify this and reduce it. Um, Christian Mitchell, hi, hi Peter. I unfortunately have to leave. Will you send a link for a replay? Yeah, we've got a recording, um, so we'll send this out afterwards. Thanks for joining us. Uh, appreciate you being here. Okay, still people joining. Uh, we're getting towards the end, but still people joining the session. Thanks for joining if you're joining in late. Okay, so I just put here examples of four steps. So you might have create the login. Uh, then they might, we might want them to personalize their profile. We might need users to perform some kind of integration. So Joran, this is a great example for Redditors. Joran from Redditors, he, he has an affiliate management platform for SaaS. And one thing that uh, Redditors needs to do is integrate um, the Redditors platform with their users uh, website or with their or with their affiliates website with their, with, with, the, with the software right Joran so um, that can be a difficult step you know so that a lot of people that might sign up they're not 
technical or developers, they might need this platform, but they're not sure how to take a script and embed it on their website or on their platform. And I think there are usually two scripts that you need to do for this type of integration. One is for the platform and one is for an accounting or payment system, because you're actually managing commissions for affiliates too. So one way we do this is just by making it as idiot proof as possible. We, we, we take them through a step-by-step -step workflow with clear instructions, with supporting content. Sometimes it's videos, video tutorials, showing them how to do something. Sometimes it's reference notes. Um, if there are snippets of code, we'll design a flow where they can actually copy the code directly. And we show them exactly where to put it. Uh, one step you can do in this is to have troubleshooting so that once they've once they've done it they can go and test hey thank you for joining us nick uh got to drop appreciate you being with us cheers for your questions too i'll we'll see you soon see you next time um so we can we can give them enough for us reference material and support that just makes that a bit easier you know takes the the ambiguity out of the process and another thing you can do is facilitate their request for help. So if they need a developer, you might give them a flow for inviting a developer, um, a space where they can put the email, hit send, a developer might come into the onboarding process and then we'll do, design a flow for the developer so that they uh, understand the problem, have notes that they can follow and that then they can do it. So it's really like hand-holding the user through a difficult process. Um, this could be concierge onboarding almost. We just make it as easy as possible for them by thinking through all the steps they need to take. Sometimes you can't avoid a, a tricky step or a friction moment within onboarding. So what we do is design it to be the best experience possible. Another example of a a friction moment in, in product adoption might be importing contacts, you know, going from one CRM to another. Maybe you have to download a, a CSV, upload it, or have a flow or integrate with a product where you can transfer all these contacts. So we want to give them the support to do it, clear guidance again, offer to skip this and then come back to help them with it later. Um, all kinds of steps to reduce the friction from this from this process or avoid it completely if it's not completely necessary. Um, so those are the five steps. So let's just, I just wanna run through those again with everybody. So we welcomed your new user to your software. We help them to visualize what does success look like for them with using your product. So what are the results they're going to achieve? That's designed to help frame your product as the right choice and help push them through any friction later in the process. Step three is we showcase the value embedded in your product by helping them map features and benefits against current frustrations or pain points that they have. Step four is that we promoted habits within your new users so that they, we actually encourage them to start activating and using features. And step five, is that we reduced as much friction from the onboarding process as possible. And the goal for that is to increase time to value, get them to a point where they're experiencing value from your software as fast as possible. So those are the five steps. Um, if anybody has any questions uh, remaining about these steps, please let me know. Um, happy to answer them. If you want to talk to us directly or you have uh, difficult um, challenge with your onboarding, then feel free to just book a call with us. Um, we call this a product audit, but really this can be just to chat about any of your issues within your product, within your onboarding. So useractive.io forward slash 15 min hyphen strategy. Feel free to book a time with us. Um, if nobody has any questions, let me just check one more time, please. If you have any, feel free to chime in. I've got a couple of minutes, or five minutes left to help you out. Uh, good session. Joran says, uh, good session. Thanks for this, Peter. Thank you. Um, thanks for joining us, Joran. Good to see you again, Adam. Thank you. Great knowledge. 
Sergio, thank you. Awesome. Um, Harish, I'll be happy to share the slides with you. Um, I'll put them in the email uh, that follows. I think this email will come, come over to you tomorrow. And I appreciate, appreciate you joining us. Thanks for that. Hey, Scott, good to see you. Great to play some guys. Appreciate that, Scott. Um, great. Okay. Lovely to see you all. Um, Ulf, hey, thanks for joining us, Ulf. Great to see you. Okay. So I think that's all of our... Uh, I think that's everything we've got today. And just last of all, if you want to reach out to me, it's peter at useractive.io. So what we'll do is uh, follow up with a recording of the session and the worksheets for you to use in your own time. But thanks again for joining us, everybody. Cheers. I'll see you. See you, Sergio.